chapter 5, look at verse 4. I will bring it forth, says the Lord of hosts. And it shall enter into the house of the thief, and into the house of him that sweareth falsely by my name. And it shall remain in the midst of his house, and shall consume it with the timber thereof, and with the stones thereof. Any remedy? Yes. What can you do to remedy the situation? We're told in Leviticus chapter 6. Leviticus chapter 6. This is the remedy. While you're opening your Bible, you repent of your lies. You repent of your sin. You repent of your deception. You repent of your hypocrisy. You repent of the false swearing. And then, after the repentance, you make restitution. Repentance plus restitution will win you the favor of God. You say, I'm sorry. What I told you the other time, it wasn't the absolute truth. And I knew it when I was saying it. I'm sorry about that. I yielded to the temptation of the devil. And there's nothing to actually gain. I gain nothing out of it. Except the shame and the guilt. And the, and the guilty conscience. As you repent of that lie. And you make restitution. And you pray to, to the Lord and say, Lord, I'm sorry about that. Cleanse me. Wash me. Cover. All those things away from your sight. And then you'll have the mercy of God. Because the Bible says, if we confess our sin, he is faithful faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Remember the Bible says he that covereth the sin shall not prosper. That is you have told a lie. You have deceived. You have sworn falsely and then you cover each up because of what they will say. How can, how can somebody like me how can I go before so and so my employer and then tell them, actually, uh, I told a lie. It wasn't right. Then look at what the consequence might be. They might say, uh, and you say you're a Christian? That's, I'm sorry. How could you do that? I'm sorry. But you've been going to church. I am sorry. And you've been pretending as if you're the cleanest and the holiest man here. I am sorry. Whatever they say, I am sorry. They won't kill you. And then you have a clear conscience. You have a clean conscience. You have a purged conscience. Then you go out of that place with a free mind. Because now you've settled the account. Leviticus chapter 6. I'm reading from verse 1. And the Lord spake to Moses saying, If it's all sin, and commit a trespass against the Lord and lie unto his neighbor and lie and lie and deceive his neighbor in that which was delivered into him and in or in fellowship or in a sin taken, uh, taken away by violence and has deceived his neighbor and has deceived his neighbor have you deceived your neighbor have you deceived your landlord? Have you deceived your co-tenant? Have you deceived a colleague? Have you deceived somebody very close, very near to you? And he has deceived his neighbor. Or he has found that which was lost in verse 3. On, and lieth concerning it. And sweareth falsely. And sweareth falsely. And sweareth falsely. You know sometimes there are people that have stolen something. Maybe in the church, maybe in the hostel, maybe in the school, maybe in the accommodation in the place you are living. They have stolen something, maybe in your place of work. And now everybody is looking for it. And this man is also serious, deadly serious, looking for what he stole. And then you will be saying, how can people be so bad like this? That as they are taking care of us in days, our church, as they are taking care of us in days, our place of work, how can somebody be so wicked and so cruel and do something like this? And the way he's talking, you think he's innocent and he is the sea. And it's even saying, I, I, I wish they should catch this person that stole this thing. This fellow should be punished. This ungrateful man or woman, whoever that person is. This uh, fellow wicked, fellow sinful, fellow backslider who can do something like this. I wish they discovered this person punished and is the one that did it. 
and the way he's talking so forcefully and so fiercely, you'll think he's an innocent man. And he begins to curse. And he begins to swear. And he begins to say, the person that has done this, and the way he's swearing, you can, you'll say, this one is innocent. You say this one, come on here, you are my partner. Let us look for who has stolen it. But the man, the woman is swearing falsely. And the Lord says there's condemnation, there's punishment on such an individual. If you're going to come out of that punishment, out of that condemnation, there'll be repentance, there'll be restitution. Look at that verse 4. It shall come, it shall be, because he has sinned and is guilty, that he shall restore that which he took violently away, and the sin which he has destroyed. Got in, or that which he delivered, that was delivered unto uh, to him to keep, and lost the lost thing that he found. All that about which he has sworn falsely. Everything that he swore falsely about, he shall even restore it in the principle, and shall add the fifth part more thereto, and give it unto him to whom it appertaineth in the day of his trespass offering. That's how he's going to be forgiven. That's why he's going to have the favor of God. That's how he's going to be able to have the forgiveness and the peace of God once again. And the salvation of the Lord once again. And the Lord hates lying. Whether in the old covenant or in the new covenant, he hates deception. It's an abomination unto the Lord. Hey, look at uh, Proverbs chapter 6. In Proverbs chapter 6, I'm reading from verse 16. These six things does the Lord hate. Yea, seven, an abomination unto him. A proud look, a lying tongue. He hates it. And if you're doing something that God hates, if you die in that condition, without repentance, without restitution, there will be no mercy. He says he hates it. A lying tongue. And then in verse, in verse 19, a false witness that speaketh Eyes, and he that soweth discord among the brethren. He that soweth discord among the brethren, God hates it. It's an abomination unto the Lord. We're told in um, Leviticus chapter 19, verse 11. Leviticus chapter 19, verse 11. He wants us who are following Christ, who are following the Lord, who believe in the Lord, to deal only in the truth, never in lying. Leviticus chapter 19, verse 11. Ye shall not steal, neither deal falsely, neither lie one to another. Lie, neither lie one to another. Neither lie one to another. Aaron, you will not lie to Moses. Joshua, you will not lie to Moses. Eliezer, you will not lie to Aaron. Caleb, you will not lie to your friend, Joshua. <laughs> Levi, you will not lie to the priest. Neither lie one to another. The Lord doesn't want us to deal in lying at all. You come to the New Testament in Colossians chapter 3 verse 9. Colossians chapter 3. We're looking at verse 9. Lie not one to another. Seen that ye have put off the old man with his deeds. Lie not one to another. Why will you lie? Because of the fear of man. Why will you lie? Because of the preservation of self-respect. Which one is greater, self-respect or your salvation? If you lie, you lose that grace and you lose that fellowship with the Lord, but then you might keep your self-respect. What's the use of self-respect if there's no salvation? If there's no eternal life? If there is no free conscience? And if there is no ticket to get to heaven? What's the use of, what's the use of self-respect or self-esteem? I need to keep my self-respect. If they knew that I was the one that did that sin, uh, they're, not, they're going to look down on me. Rather than allow them to look down you and keep your, for, uh, keep your clean conscience and keep your salvation and keep your relationship and fellowship with the Lord. What do you want to do with self-respect if you don't go to heaven? Uh, the people that go to hell with self-respect, 
What does that matter to them? The thing that matters is our relationship with the Lord, our salvation, righteousness that keeps us in the bosom of the Lord, lying not one to another. Seeing that you have put up the old man with his deeds. We're told in Revelation chapter 21. Revelation chapter 21. I'm reading from verse 8. Revelation chapter 21. Reading from verse 8. But the fearful, the unbelieving, the abominable, the murderers, and the all mongers and sorcerers, and idolaters, and all liars, all liars, shall have their in the lake which born fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Lying will get you to hell. Whether you swear to it or not, lying, lying without swearing, lying with swearing, the same thing will get you to hell. In Revelation chapter 27, chapter 21, verse 27, and there shall in no wise enter into it, that is, the new Jerusalem, anything that defileth, neither whatsoever worketh abomination, or maketh a lie, manufacturing a lie, developing a lie, and then producing a lie. Neither shall any of those people that make lying, that make a lie, neither will they enter into it, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. Revelation chapter 22, verse 15. For without outside the gates of heaven, for without are the doors and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. We go to point number two. Christ's prohibition of swearing for Christians. Christ's prohibition of swearing for Christians. In Matthew chapter 5, Matthew chapter 5, we come to verse 34. Here the Lord Jesus Christ now wants to lay down the principle of the kingdom of God, the principle for citizens of the kingdom, how they are to live. The life where to live. Here is, here is it. It says, but I say unto you, what a great authority. But I say unto you, swear not at all, neither by heaven, for it is God's throne. It says, swear not at all. And it tells us now, all the various items and the various things we mustn't use, must not come out of our mouth, thinking that we're swearing to the truth. That I say this, and then you say, heaven is my witness. Said never. I say this, and I swear by Jerusalem that this is the absolute truth. Said never. I say this, and for you to know it is the truth, I swear by my head. If it is not the truth, let something happen to my head. The Lord said, never. He says, but I say unto you, swear not at all, neither by heaven, because it is God's throne. In verse 35, neither by the earth, for it is his footstool. Then he says, neither by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. He goes on in verse 36, and he says, neither shall thou swear by thy head. Because thou canst not make one ear white or black. You will see then that Christ, the highest authority in all points of Christian doctrine and Christian practice. He tells us what the Christian doctrine is. What's the doctrine? What's the teaching? What's the principle? Swear not at all. That is in your family, in your home, between husband and wife, between parents and children, between landlord and the co and the tenants, between the tenants together, co-tenants together, swear not at all. Between the principal and the students, between the teacher and the principal, and between the learners and those who are learned, it says swear not at all. In your community and in your in your in your office, it says swear not at all. Maybe the manager calls you. Hey, there is somebody is putting something here every time. And before we come to the office, something is, uh, you know, putting the shackle here. And everybody, all you workers, I know you don't like me. Somebody wants to do me harm. Okay, everybody now, if you're if you not the one, you will swear. And then it says, line up. Today, before we start work, everybody will swear. And then you say, uh, please, uh, a director, I'm a Christian. You know, I cannot do anything like that. Take my word for it. I'm innocent of this. I don't know what you're talking about. 
if you don't know today, I'm not going to take Christian or no Christian, church goer or no church goer. Everybody must swear. You say, I will not. If you don't swear, then it is you that is uh, pouring, this down, pouring this thing down here. You say, no, my word is my bond. And you not allow the pressure or the threat or the things they will say. You not allow that to push you into swearing because Jesus said, swear not at all. That's the Christian doctrine. That's the Christian precept. That's the Christian practice. Christ as the authoritative teacher. Christ as the final Lord and Savior. He commands God's people in this present dispensation. Swear not at all. And then we should faithfully and unhesitatingly take him at his word. Not using the oath or swearing under any circumstances. Instead of taking an oath or swearing in a court of law. Even when you go to a court of law because you need uh, the affidavit for your birth certificate. Or maybe another thing. Or you want to sign a particular document. And you say, well, this document... Before it will come out, you must hold on to the Bible and then raise up the other hand and say, I swear by, you say, no, I will not swear. I will affirm my word. Christians don't swear, but rather you affirm the truth of what you say. Instead of saying, I do hereby solemnly swear, you will say, I do affirm that then you affirm what you want to affirm. There is an essential difference between an oath and an affirmation. When we take an affirmation, we simply state what we mean to, that we mean to tell the truth so far as we understand it. Knowing that if we violate this promise of telling the truth, we'll be held under the same penalties as if we had violated an oath. That is, if we told a lie just because we are not swearing, we we'll see under judgment. Let us note that while we are definitely commanded to not to swear at all, the inspired writer does not hesitate to say, I will affirm, I will affirm. And let's look at Titus chapter 3 verse 8. Titus chapter 3 verse 8. I will that thou affirm. In uh, Titus chapter 3 verse 8, here is what it says. This is a faithful saying. And these things I will that thou affirm constantly. Yes, we can affirm. You speak the word of truth. And then you say, here it is, I affirm that what I have said is the truth. That then is to guide us in all the things we do, in all the things we say. James chapter 5, I'm reading verse 12. In James chapter 5, we're looking at verse 12. But above all things, my brethren, swear not. Out of the mouths of two or three witnesses, the truth shall be affirmed and confirmed. The Lord Jesus Christ said, swear not at all. Here we read in the epistle of James. It says, but above all things, my brethren, swear not. Neither by heaven, neither, neither by the earth, neither by any other oath, but let your yea be yea, let your yes be yes, and let your nay be nay, let your no be no, lest ye fall into condemnation.